I have one new doll thing to share this week. And it's actually not new, it's that cocoon dress pattern. I finally got it, the instructions written, and I got it released, and I put the link in last week's video description many days after the video went up, and I will put that in this description. And as you recall, <laughs> there is the version with no pockets, you know, one solid front, and they all have this shape in the back. And then, if you get a look at the pattern, you'll see that the version with pockets, I include arrows to show the grain, usually up and down, that's with the grain, which is perpendicular side to side from selvage to selvage on a woven cloth actually stretches just a little bit because that's usually the more decorative threads whereas the threads that go along the length of the cloth are the stronger threads so on human clothes whether you follow the grain or not it does make a difference in how it hangs just because there's so much more cloth I don't know if it makes that much of a difference in general and how it hangs in a doll but I still include the grain anyway and I ignore it a lot but if you look at the pattern for the cocoon dress, this time with the side piece for the pockets, the side sh front side piece, you'll see that instead of having one arrow just up and down like most of the pattern pieces will have, this has an up and down arrow, a side to side arrow, and two diagonal arrows. Because there are options for what to do with the grain. Cutting it on the grain is what this one did don't know if you can see it, but you see the um, the direction of the cloth on the side is exactly like the direction of the cloth on the front. It's really obvious in person that this cloth has this sort of waffle weave to it, so you can see the direction. So that's with the grain, that's the arrow up and down. Then the arrow sideways is cutting it across the grain when you see this has the stripes woven into it, so the stripes are absolutely on grain. And then on the side, I rotated it, the pattern piece 90 degrees to cut across the grain. So that's the slight subtle variation on this one. And then the third one that I sewed after the last video was to show how it would look cut on the diagonal. So I used a homespun plaid for it, and as you can see, diagonal grain. I did want to make sure, I, I almost wrote up the instructions and released the pattern without testing that it would actually work. I figured it would work, but I wanted, I just wanted to make a dress for this doll. I wanted to dress her in one of these, but it just didn't seem quite right for her, so I wanted to get in this slightly more colorful. And this is some cloth that I got from Tiffy, and Queen of Squids sent the cloth that I used for the tights, which I cut without a pattern. I just kind of laid the doll down and cut around it and sewed it and took parts in and sewed more until it worked. And Queen of Squids also sent these pom-poms on um, attachment points. <laughs> which, from the way they feel, I think they're actually just flopped plastic or something. They're not proper pom-poms, but that's okay. So, and yes, these are Bradzilla's shoes. They're way too big for the made-to-move feet, but the color was perfect to go with this dress, so I really wanted her to wear these shoes. And the tights aren't completely random. You can see there's a bit of sort of a mustardy color in the floral to match. The mustard, the plaid, and of course the greens and the greens. And like I said, if you sew it together, it goes together. I think it's a little in my mind a little iffier if you're just putting them together, but just just put them together. You have a reason or you don't. You can explain your reason or you can don't. People will make up a reason or they won't. It doesn't matter. And again, dolls can get away with a lot more that humans can't. And the closest to doll news I have ooh, is that um, I went to Walmart last week and saw the baseball player made to move Barbie. She's in the assortment with the baseball player the Modern Dancer, and the Kirby, the second Kirby made to move. But there is no sign in the Walmart, there was just the one baseball player last week. This week I checked again, two baseball players, none of the other dolls. So I don't know if there's a display somewhere that I didn't see or if that they're putting out a whole box of them and they're getting bought really fast. 
So, I don't know. I'll keep looking. I'm not even sure I'll be able to convince myself to buy another Kirby Maid to move. I'll find one because I need to use what I have. But that doesn't stop me from looking. I did look in the thrift store today and there was nothing. I did see a Minnie Mouse and thought of Queen of Squids because Queen of Squids has been doing customs where she puts a Minnie Mouse head on a fashion doll body and then she also grafts the gloves on. But I resisted. I didn't buy anything. And that's all the doll stuff I have to talk about this week. But I have painty snuff painty snuff, painty stuff to show you on s Sunday? Sunday, I think it was. I finally got back to airbrushing dinosaurs and other little vinyl critters. And I have the cat hair in my nose, sorry. So I did that for quite a while on Sunday to the point that I was wearing the respirator so long that I didn't realize that the pollen kicked up until after th however long I was wearing it, I took it off and I walked out of the room and the pollen, just my allergies, just immediately grabbed me. So that was fun. But I still need to go through and paint like teeth and eyes and things, but I will show you what I did. Okay, so I really don't know where to start with these. I have, I think there's 21 here. I will start with the thing that is not a little vinyl dinosaur. And that's this that I thrifted, it's um, plaster. And I know you're supposed to paint them you know, a little more realistically, but I could not resist just blasting at this with the airbrush. And then we'll rotate her. I didn't get as um, convincing a fake color change effect on this as I did on some of the other things, but this gives you kind of an idea of what I was doing with my different fluorescent pastel colors and the top coat of, um, sorry, getting the cat's box out of the way so I don't step on it. There's no cat in it. Um, the top coat of pearl essence to kind of give it a different shimmery vibe. Like this one I just painted in, it's called bubblegum pink, and I put the pearl coat on it. It was originally, this was originally a um, black cat Halloween decoration from Walmart last year. See, I didn't move it enough, there's actually some black visible at the bottom. But this is a thing I'm definitely keeping for me of no idea what the fate of this will be. So I'm a little hesitant to try to ship something ceramic, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see. All these other guys, though, are plastic. Kind of squishy, soft, not squishy, vinyl. You know, heavy vinyl. They'll bend if you push them, but they're not, they're not likely to break in transit. I just would hope that I have plenty of bubble wrap to try to save the paint job because if people want these, it's entirely for how they're painted. So, I don't know where to start. I'll start with this, this one. See, it looks, appears green from the front. And then, like I said, I hope the effect is a sort of fake color shift. So, you know, real color shift paint the effect relies on where the light is hitting it. This one is just like I painted the whole thing green and then I held the airbrush to the back and just painted it this way without moving it and then another slightly of um... I don't think I went over this with purple. I think this is pink with blue over it but it might be it might be the purple. I used green and blue and purple and pink and a yellowish orange. I didn't use so much of the yellowish orange. Most of the reason I used the yellowish orange is so I could get pumpkin color. But I did do this. Which has some overspray on the bottom because I held it up so I could get under the things. And I realized after I put the base coat up yellow on this that this could be called a ray of sunshine. Um, again, I'm not sure selling this because when I, this was originally painted very dark gray and when I took the paint off I didn't take it off thoroughly because I thought what I would paint over it would hide it but yellows are always very um, sheer so if you know what you're looking at you can see some streaks of the original paint through it but just it's fun I don't know I don't know I had fun doing these and I think they look fun and I know some other people will think they look fun, but I think in general, 
people will think they're weird. But I do like the effect that it looks like it has lights and shadow shining on it no matter what angle you do. None of the others had, I thought, even vaguely thing, punny things. But, oh well, no, there is the pastel elephant. Again, I actually started painting this one yellow, but I didn't like it, so I went over it with the green. And then, just, I'll, I'll do that one next. I did the blast of pink from the back, and then came back around and did blue from the front. So that's the past elephant. And let me get who just dropped. That would be the wolf. This is the highest quality model of all these. It's so much heavier than all these other hollow plastic models. This one was made by, I think, Safari. So it's not quite as nice as Schleich, but... And this is one of those that I really wasn't sure where I was going with it, what I was doing with it, and I wasn't even sure if the colors worked out well at all until I got the pearl coat on at the end, and that just made it shimmer and shine. And I'm hoping somebody who likes wolves will find a home for it. I'm trying not to sound like a made on TV, I've seen on TV salesperson trying to give a pitch for all this stuff. This is another, th there were a few that after I put the first coat of paint on them and then left them alone for, you know, a month or two, the, uh, something went bad on the paint. So I don't know if I just didn't prep them well because I didn't do much to them to prep them or if something happened to the paint reactions. But there's like chunky, grungy stuff on the back there. But overall, we have a nice pastel blue-green yellow shark with pink underbelly. And this one is a little pearlier than the other ones because I had actually not realized I painted this one purple. I thought it was the original color purple and I was piling, piling all of them that I hadn't painted into another box for to paint sometime in the future. And then I pulled this one out I was like, oh yeah, that one I did paint. So I blasted a few other colors on it and then at the very end when I put the pearl medium, the pearl coat on it, I just opened the airbrush all the way and emptied it out. So this one is a lot pearlier and shinier than the others. And apologies for not knowing what it is. I thought it was a Strachosaurus, but it is the, the horns are all wrong for Strachosaurus. So. This is a little darker. The purple was darker than I thought it would be, so it has the blast of pink on it. And as I can't not admit to my laziness with these. A lot of them I did not pick up and paint the undersides. So if you actually lift them up and look at their bellies, it's the original stock color. But on display, I guess you wouldn't notice. So here's another one that I don't know what it is. I don't think it says on the bottom. Some of them do. But this is another one that I think did a pretty good job mimicking the appearance of color shift paint. You know, someday I'm going to actually buy color shift paint and then I don't know what I'm going to do. And now we do have a, a good old fashioned Triceratops. Really, really old fashioned. This is unfortunately another one where some of the paint went bad, but overall, I really love the colors of this one. Like I said, I will probably go through and paint the teeth and the eyes on these, but I might not. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. You know that, right? Patasaurus. 
It used to be Brachiosaurus, I think. Everything I know about dinosaurs comes from watching Dinosaur Train, and the kiddo has not watched Dinosaur Train for five or six years, so I'm getting rusty. I have no idea if the colors of these are really coming up in the video. I need to try to figure out how to get pictures of these. It's hard for me. I've tried to get pictures of these in the past, and because the effect, I think, comes best from when it moves and you can see the colors change. I'm, I've been horrible at pictures of them, but I try. I will try. Let's see. And then some kind of Kylosaurus. This one I only did two colors on. I did a base coat of pink, so it's pink from this direction, and then I did a blast of green from the back, so it's green. And I really like that combination. The Spinosaurus I did, one, you know, one of the first ones I did last year, however long ago I tried painting airbrushing dinosaurs like this. I did a Spinosaurus just in pink and green, and that's probably the one I'm going to keep for myself, absolutely. So I like that. I also did this lizard in... I might have put some blue on it, but I definitely have the pink to green. And I really like this lizard, too. So there might be a blast of blue on the side. I don't remember what I did. So there are enough of these that I don't remember everything I did. They have some more. I think these are amusing. I would guess that this is the original. If you know when vinyl is cast, it has to be cast larger because it shrinks after it comes out of the mold and cools down. So this is probably the original one. And then this one is probably cast directly from this one because these things are not made with the most ethical business practices, you know. So, these two I did a little darker. I think this one, I did a base of green, or maybe blue, with a blast of purple from the back, a blast of pink from the front. Yeah, I think I did it in green because there's a blast of blue slightly from the top. And then this one I did, yeah, this one I did the base of blue. And then I did the blast of yellow from the back, but I didn't really like it. Because like I said, I want to like yellow. Yellow is a fun color, but it's not my color. So I went over it with pink, and that made it kind of orange, and I really didn't like it. Until I got the pearl coat on it, and then suddenly it became almost rose gold. So we have a turquoise and rose gold apatosaurus. And then these two are the same mold. I think these are ones that Susan sent. This is the darker, gothier one. It's the base of purple. And then a blast on of some green and some blue and a touch of pink. But this one is one of my favorites. I think the base was green, I think. Maybe. I really don't know. I think, or maybe it's pink. I don't know. That's part of the point of these is that you can't tell what the base color is. We've got pink and green. Pink face. And it's kind of bluish green to the pink and green. And then there's a big blast of blue on this side. Like, so this is one of my favorites because it really looks to me like it's just white with different colors of light shining on it and the, making the shadows and things and that's what I love about the overspray look and I usually tend to overdo it but I think this one turned out really cool and this lion gave me problems because I wasn't sure I thought about just like doing rainbow stripes on it and making a pr pride lion lion pride pride lion but that wasn't really, doing distinct stripes really isn't my thing, well, at least not with this round. So I just went around and around and around so many times with the paint on this one. And I eventually gave up, but then again, I hit it with the pearl coat. And I absolutely love the way the colors play. 
around on the main. Of course, now I see like cat hair in it. And again, it's a subtle, maybe kind of color change, color shift looking paint on the back. But I really love the main. I'm almost done with them. And then I had some large bugs, which I'm going to give these to a bug-loving friend. First one I did was this with a base of purple. I was hoping to try to get sort of an um, Aurora Borealis finish on it, but I got over-enthusiastic with my lighter colors. I should have kept it to darker colors, but I didn't have them any mixed up. So we have that bug. And then the opposite of this dark bug is this super pastel beetle. I mean, they're both beetles. Super pastel. And I really like the way the colors landed on the feelers, the antenna, and the legs. And then the last thing is like, you know, I like this one. I like how this turned out a lot. This last one is my absolute favorite. It's crap. I did a base coat of pink on this one, and you can see that a little bit on the legs, but then I came in at, no, no, this one's base coat was blue, that's right, this one was a base coat of blue. Like I said, it doesn't ultimately matter, but it might if anybody else wants to try this, and if you do want to try this, I would love to see it. Yeah, the base coat on this one was blue. So I painted the whole thing blue, and then I came at it from the front with the pink, and then from the back with the green. And it's just such a lovely pastel crab. <laughs> it's like, I don't know how much I want to embellish these. I don't know if I want to put glitter on them, or bows or things, or leave that to whoever ends up with them. Or if I even don't want to paint their eyes and like, it is hollow and squishy. If I don't want to paint, even paint their eyes and just leave that up to whoever ends up with it. Because I like sharing DIY projects with people. And they can, these things do look interesting as they are, but maybe they could look more interesting if someone else brought their mind into it and decorated it in their style. So that's what I've been doing instead of dolls. And, um, and, like I said, I don't know what exactly I'm going to do with these. I mean, yeah, like, do some eye detail, but I don't know if anyone is still interested in acquiring them somehow. I don't know how to go about doing that. I don't know if there's really that much interest in them. And I still have about 12 that I didn't paint at all because that's a lot of little plastic critters and it was getting to be overwhelming. So, you can help me figure out what to do with these. I guess, maybe, if you want. Thanks, and thanks for watching. Bye.